In this session, we will showcase the expression set data class. This is a very important uh, data container and bioconductor. It, it is important in its own right, and it's also important as a foundation for a lot of other data containers. As an example data set, we'll look at the ALL packets, which is a so-called experimental data package from Bioconductor. These types of packages repackage uh, existing data uh, from publications into like nice to uh, easy to use uh, 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 data sets in R. So there's a data set called ALL, and we can try to print it. And from the print, uh, method, we see that this is an expression set, big surprise on that. Uh, and there seems to be 12, around 12,000 features. In this case, a feature is a gene uh, and 128 samples. We can get a little bit knowledge, we can know a little bit more about the experiment by uh, uh, using the accessor function called experiment data. which prints a little bit of, uh, of information that uh, who did the experiment and what was the title, and there's links to two PubMed IDs, two specific papers detailed in the experiment. More information can be had by looking at the help page, um, where we see a little bit of information about what covariates are in the data set and uh, where's the source from. Obviously, for most data sets that you use in practice, you don't get them from inside of an R package and the help page is not available. Let's try to explore this data set a little bit. So the most important uh, thing in the data set, so depending on how you look at it, one of the most important aspects of the data set is the expression measures or the, 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 quanti the quantification of the expression of the different genes. That can be accessed using the uh, express uh, access a function which returns a matrix, and it's a big matrix, has 12,000 rows and 128 columns. So I'm just going to print the first four rows and the first four columns. And here we see on the right some affymetrics identifiers. These are uh, names invented by affymetrics, which is a microarray uh, vendor, uh, for detailing uh, specific details about what is actually being missing. And on the columns, we have these uh, numbers that are sample IDs. You can get the, uh, uh, you can get the, the, the sample names and the feature names by using uh, the, uh, the sample names accessor function and the feature names. Oh, we printed them all. Um, and uh, well, that's easy to get like the, the, these names here that we use quite a lot. This was the expression measures. Uh, we also very interested in the phenotype data. The phenotype data is uh, covariates or information about the samples that was, that was being run. We get that by, by using the access of function called P data, P for pheno. And this is a big data frame. It has 128 uh, rows now. So we are just gonna print the top of them. Uh, we can see there's information about the samples such as the sex, the diagnose, the age. Uh, and various other types of information that are important in order to interpret the data. We can, uh, usually you're not interested in like all the covariates, but you wanna do some modeling or you wanna access a specific covariate. You can do that since this is a data frame by using the dollar operator. But you can also just use the dollar operator directly onto the expression set. That gives you the, uh, the, the, the covariate as, as you can see here. That's a very useful uh, and quick shortcut. An expression set satisfies a two-dimensional subsetting. The first dimension gives you features and the second dimension gives you samples. So this type of subsetting here, I'm selecting the first five samples and you can see in the output that I get back all 12,000 genes, <coughs> but only five samples. In the same way I can exit, I can ask for the first 10 features and now I get back an expression set that has 10 features, but keeps 128 samples. And I can, of course, uh, subset on both uh, things simultaneously, and then I get a small data set back. This means that the expression set uh, is closed under subsetting. When we subset the expression set, we get another expression set. And this is a, a very useful feature. 
So you can think of the P data uh, data frame as information about samples. In the same way as there's information about the samples, you can also get information about the features. You access that with something called feature data, not if data, although one would think so, but feature data. Uh, unfortunately, this slot here is in most instances that I know of empty. It can contain information about the genes, but in this case and in many other cases, uh, people don't put the information into the object itself. We'll talk about that in a moment. Now, uh, let's look a little bit about annotating or understanding what was measured on the array. Uh, so let's get the first uh, uh, the first five feature names. So these are these identifiers we've seen before. They don't really make sense. These are in itself, these are identifiers that uh, the microarray vendor decided to put on the different genes. In order to fully understand what genes were measured on the array, we have to take these identifiers and map them into gene symbols uh, in a way that makes sense. In Bioconductor, this is used, uh, this is done through an annotation package. And in this case, because the microarray was of a type called HGU95AB2, which is a very widely used, or was a very widely used microarray. This uh, information is uh, inside the HGU95AB2.db package. We're not really gonna go into details about how to use this package, in, but we'll just point out that it's possible using various uh, maps inside of this package to, to map these Ephemetrix IDs into specific things. So for example, there's a, an object that allows you to map uh, into um, entree ID. So we're gonna take this stuff here, and we're gonna subset it like this. And you can see here that we now get something back called entree IDs that we can you know, query. These are meaningful gene identifiers. We can query them in a public database. Now I'm going to end with a little note, mostly of historical interest, about the P data slot. So in reality, there's both something called phenodata and something called P data. P data is really what I recommend people using. It gives you back a data frame. Phenodata gives you this thing called an annotated data frame with sample names and bar labels. So really, the idea was when they created this back in the day that a standard R data frame had no information about the different covariates. For example, in this data set, there's a covariate called diagnosis, uh, date of diagnosis, but uh, but what type of diagnosis, or let's let's take a, perhaps a better example here. Um, remission, well, AIDS, well, some of these are like somewhat straightforward, but right often, it, it, it's hard to fully understand what is inside a column. So in order to do that, they made this data class called an annotated data frame that really was a mixture of a data frame and something called var labels that contains information about, in this case, not a lot of information, but could contain information about what was missing in different columns. So this is a little bit of historical interest. This is uh, in order to illustrate that Phenodata of ALL is not the same as P data of ALL. And that phenodata actually contains the P data slot. We can say P data on phenodata of ALL. And we get back the full uh, P data uh, 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 data frame. This is what I have to say about expression sets. I hope that the last part was not too confusing. This is a very, very widely used type of data container that has proven to be immensely successful and important to using Bioconductor. The key thing is that it keeps the expression information and the phenotype information together in a sensible way.